We're off to a bad start. I looked down at my cup and my lashes were on it like this. Focus on this. And I thought it was a gigantic spider. Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Sam, infrequent uploader. I had a baby somewhat unexpectedly. We can get into it today. Before I even say what I'm about to say, I'm gonna preface this with the facts. I had already decided I was going to film today before I was given the direction to relay this messaging. And I'm gonna point fingers about it, okay? I don't want the hammer coming down on me. And that's called adulthood. And that's called taking responsibility, okay? Being held accountable, but only for the things you wish to be held accountable for. We are having our yearly Auric birthday sale on January 26th. This year, it's January, we'll do it over the weekend because the 26th lands on a Friday, so it just felt like, made sense. So 26th, 27th, 28th will be 15% off the website. It's our third birthday. I truly can't believe it. What a ride. I've been doing so much reflecting about this lately because I am just seeing so many small businesses struggling and sharing about struggling, um, which I think is not great that they're struggling, but I think it's great that they're sharing it because a lot of people go through the same issues. And so I'm just feeling really grateful that we were able to make it to this point on our own. It's kind of wild to be honest, but I wasn't coming to film just to share that we were having a birthday sale. The fucking stars aligned, okay? Okay, let's get back to our usual programming where I do my makeup haphazardly and um, talk about traumatic events in my life. God, I haven't been liking doing foundation lately because I have this clear glowing skin. I think I'm going to not actually. I think I'm just going to blend out a little bit of concealer from like the center of my face and then I'm gonna do the rest. <laughs> I'm gonna draw the rest of the owl, okay? I'm gonna give a recap for those of you that are not aware of my situation, okay? And I'll leave out the drama. Long story short, I was pregnant I was having a bunch of pregnancy complications, um, the largest of which is that my cervix was continually shortening over time. So one of the associated risks with that is that you can have um, like really quick labors or um, preterm labor, stuff like that. So over the course of my pregnancy, I thought to myself, what's probably like the best situation I could put myself in. And the conclusion I came to is moving to an island without a hospital on it. So that's what I did. Um, and turns out <laughs> we could have used the hospital, to be honest. When I had my first baby, I had it on a Monday and Monday is always like our auric call meetings day. So we finished our meetings and then I went into labor like shortly thereafter and had my first baby that day. Um, the same fucking thing, the same thing. I was able to get those final meetings in, God damn it, <laughs> and then go into labor and have a baby. But here's what actually happened. So I had to switch like healthcare providers midway through my pregnancy, obviously, because we moved. Um, and the healthcare provider that I had before we moved was like, she knew we were moving to this island and she was like, you, like my recommendation would be that you come back to the mainland, like stay on the mainland, like at least a month before your due date um, so that you're just there and ready. Because now to get to the mainland, we have to take a ferry and the ferry doesn't run overnight. Um, it runs like once an hour, give take, depending on the day. I would say that like our ferry route is like relatively unreliable because it's not a major route. Um, and so if there's ever to be a situation where like staff is taken off our route to be put onto another one, it's, it is our route that it gets taken off of. So that was kind of what we were planning. And then when I switched to a different midwife, um, and different like healthcare providers, they, every person I talked to kind of had a different opinion. <laughs> um, there were some people that were like, yeah, that would probably be, you know, best for you to like come over, you know a month before and then there was other people like the midwife that I was seeing most frequently because you kind of like rotate between whoever is there um so that you're more familiar with like everyone on staff and the midwife that I was having most frequently was like really kind of making it seem like not a big deal it's 
you're fine. Like, what are we going to do anyways? There's not going to be like a huge difference. So like, it's, it's not an issue. Um, and so we ended up deciding kind of at like the last second that we could, that we were going to stay on the island until two weeks before my due date. So the week that this happened, it ended up happening on a Monday. We were supposed to leave to go to the mainland that Friday. So we had like already booked an Airbnb. We almost made it, but not, not quite. On the Sunday afternoon, I was over at my friend and neighbor's house and she had just had a bunch of um, chicks hatch. And so she was like, oh, why don't you bring um, like your little one over and you guys can see the chicks and whatever. So me and like my whole family went over there um, and we were just like chit-chatting, hanging out, whatever. When I got up to leave to like walk back home, I was like, did my water just break? Because for some additional context, ever since having my first, I would have moments of just peeing my pants. And especially so once I got into like later pregnancy because like the weight was just like so much that like if I was like walking too quickly or like running or making like sudden movements like to strike someone perhaps, um, then that would happen. So I was used to that happening anyways, but this felt like slightly different and I was like, hmm. <laughs> is this my water breaking? But I was like, I have a collection of movies in my mind in which people's water break and it's not quite like this. So I think I'm fine. And I Googled it a little bit um, and everything that it was saying was not what was happening for me. Like I just had like the tiniest little dribble, I would call it. And then as we were walking home, it was like continuing a little bit, but not really dramatically. And I was saying to my mom, I was like, I'm not sure like what's going on. Like, I'm wondering if my water just broke, blah, blah, blah. But what I was reading online is that like, it can vary in size and stuff like that. Like in terms of like how much liquid is coming out um, and the color and stuff can vary. But like, if your water did break, then it will continually like leak out over time. So it'll be kind of like more noticeable and that, wasn't really what was happening. I mean, it was hard to discern because again, like I just did have bladder control issues anyways. Um, but it didn't feel different from my bladder control issues. It didn't feel like more consistent or like it was more liquid or anything like that. This is like so TMI. What is my life? Like I cannot believe this is what I do for a living. I felt like if it was labor, which we now know it was, <laughs> that there would be some other indication. Like there would be some other type of like anything, any type of sign, like getting Braxton Hicks or losing my mucus plug or like anything, anything at all. There's going to be some other indication that I'm in labor. Long story short, went to dinner with my friends. Um, <laughs> we had a grand old time. I came home, went to bed. The next morning, woke up, did my calls, still nothing, wasn't feeling anything different, wasn't like having any other symptoms of labor. So I just carried on with my life, went in the pool, which you're not supposed to do if you think your water's broken. And then around like four o'clock, I was sitting in the living room with Matt and I was like, you know, I'm wondering if we should just go to the mainland because like I'm not 100% sure and I low-key don't want to have a baby on the ferry. And he was like, okay, well, let's just go if you want to go. And I was like, let me think about it. And then, so I went upstairs <laughs> and I took a shower because I was starting to feel weird. Like I wasn't getting contractions um, that I was aware of or could feel. I was just feeling like a little bit off. Like that's the most dramatic description I can give you of like how I was feeling. And so I went into the shower. I was just relaxing my body. Um, and then I got out and as soon as I got out of the shower, I like had to like kneel down on my hands and knees. And I was like, wow, that feels like a contraction. <laughs> and I was like, it's, it's probably Braxton Hicks. It's probably fine. Which I'm going to once again in my illustrious YouTube career, take the opportunity to make this a feminist complaint. I just feel like We've been so conditioned to having what we're going through minimized that we ourselves often minimize. Again, I like to point fingers in directions other than toward myself. There's like, there's like a, 
hotline that you can call for the midwives. There's like an emergency one and like a non-emergency one. So I had called the non-emergency one and I was like, I left a message and they are supposed to get back to you within like 24 hours kind of thing. Um, but they, and I had called that morning, Monday morning. Um, and no one had gotten back to me yet. And again, like now this is around four o'clock. Matt was like, just call the emergency line. And I was like, it's not an emergency. Like I was like, I don't want to like take resources <laughs> from other people who need them if I'm not having an emergency. And I don't think I'm having a bloody emergency for God's sake. I'm just in labor. <laughs> I, I didn't want to go to the mainland, go through the whole song and dance of like going into the hospital, telling them what happened, going and sitting down in front of like waiting hours to get in kind of thing. And then having them be like, yeah, you peed your pants lady. And then I would have to cry obviously, because my feelings would be hurt. So I just was like, I'm gonna wait until I know for sure something's serious and now I desperately need to be in a hospital and I can't. You know, what's the problem with my logic? I don't see any. I get out of the shower, I'm having these contractions. I text Matt and I'm like, maybe we should call the midwives. And then I was, I was laying down in bed um, and I was about to text him to say, let me just like, just give me 20 minutes to like see how this pans out kind of thing. And like within minutes of me texting him, it was like zero to a hundred. Like I was having contractions really close together. I'm just gonna use my Auric Viceroy lashes. I did have my half lashes and then I lost one of the half lashes. So I just cut the full lashes in half. So I was gonna text him saying, just give me a second kind of thing. And then it ramped up so quickly. And then I was like, actually, <laughs> I think we should call 911. So I called the emergency midwife and I was like, I, this is what's going on. I'm not like a hundred percent sure. And she was like, okay, I'll meet you at the hospital. And I was like, do you think it's that serious? And she was like, yeah, I think you're in labor. <laughs> so I, um, which this has been like about almost, no, it's been over 24 hours since my water broke at this point. Cause my water broke around three o'clock um, and it's four now, 420 specifically. Um, and Matt calls 911. And so I'm like getting dressed. I don't have like a hospital bag together. I have like nothing ready to go. I'm not the least bit prepared for this, um, despite being told that there's like a chance that my baby is going to arrive early. But this is the thing, again, my one healthcare provider was like, e you're fine. It's gonna be fine. So I thought it was gonna be fine. Matt's talking to the lady on 911. I come downstairs and she's wanting me to count my contractions. And at that point, I was in such a state of disbelief that like, I couldn't really concentrate because also I was in a state of labor. So I was like having a hard time trying to like count out my contractions the way that she was wanting me to. And then at some point she was like, I need to know how, how far the gap is between. And I was like, there is no gap. <laughs> and she was like, okay, I need you to get on the floor um, and take your pants off, put a blanket over yourself, like undress completely from the waist down. And I looked at Matt and I was like, okay, the drama, give me a break. I'm not fucking getting undressed here. And she was like, the paramedics are on the way. And all I was picturing again was like paramedics showing up to my house. I'm naked from the waist down. And they're like, you peed yourself. <laughs> you called 911 because you peed yourself and had some cramps, lady. And so she's continually telling us to do this. And then eventually she was like, is she, is she on the ground undressed? And Matt was like, no. And she was like, I need you to get on the ground and get undressed. This poor woman, honestly, she probably quit her job after this. And then um, I do it and I'm like, this is the craziest shit ever. Like, I, like, this is so ridiculous. There's literally no way this is happening right now. And then she says to Matt, she's like, okay, I'm gonna tell you how to deliver this baby. And my mom was here at this point too. He had texted my mom to like come grab our first kid. They were like, I need you to grab clean towels, string and a pin. And so my mom runs off to go get towels. And then Matt's like panicking, like his face just like completely dropped. And I was just like, as if like this, is, it, 
in what fucking world is Matt going to deliver this child on our fucking kitchen floor right now? Like, this is not real. And so um, Matt starts arguing with the 911 responder because we had had, first of all, they were like, the ambulance is probably about 15 minutes away. And now Matt's panicking, like, oh, I'm going to have to deliver this baby in the next 15 minutes. <laughs> and also we had been told from several people that like, if something serious happens, they'll airlift you off the island. So Matt starts arguing with this woman, like, why aren't they airlifting us? And she was like, what? Why would they airlift you? And he was like, we were told they would airlift us. And she was like, who told you that? And they're like arguing back and forth. And like, I'm so stressed. And I was like, Matt, I need you to go outside. Like, stop arguing around me. Like, I can't handle this right now. And so he leaves. And then I'm sitting there and I'm like, Oh, I'm fucking alone. <laughs> My mom went to go get towels. She's running around looking for a fucking string. Matt's outside arguing with the 911 responder. I'm sitting alone on our kitchen floor. I'm about to have a baby. And I'm like, oh fuck. So then I'm like calling my mom and calling my mom and calling my mom, panicking. She doesn't pick up. I'm like trying, I'm like, should I call Matt? And then like, what if I disrupt the call with 911? And then I can't remember who ended up coming back in first, but the paramedics were there like shortly thereafter. I think, I don't know. I was like in such a fucking fever dream at that point. The paramedics get there. They're asking me like how I'm doing and like what I'm feeling and stuff like that. And like, I can't even, I can't even at this point. Um, I'm just like, I've got nothing to say about the situation. Okay, I clearly waited too long and I've got no one to blame but myself. So like, I was just in such a state that I couldn't even talk really. And my mom was just like, she's feeling a lot of pressure. And so they get me onto a stretcher. I just like kept my eyes closed because I was like, I if I just close my eyes and wish hard enough, this won't be real. <laughs> so I just had my eyes closed and I just remember like them putting me onto the stretcher and taking me outside. Um, and like the, it was like a really hot, like warm summer day. Um, and like the breeze when I went outside was just like, oh my God, like the most incredible thing ever, which the first time I gave birth, Matt had this like shitty little fan that was like, Zzz. and he was blowing it on me during labor. And it was like just heaven. Like it was a miraculous invention to me at the time. Um, and it was that, but nature, it was so great. I was like, this is the best feeling ever. Um, and then they get me into the ambulance. The woman driving that ambulance, haul an ass. And then we get to the ferry dock. I'm not going on the ferry. I'm going on a water taxi. The water taxi is essentially a guy with a boat. And by essentially, I mean, that's exactly what it is. Um, so they get me off the ambulance onto the water taxi. I was not aware of like this happening, but apparently we left the dock. And then one of the paramedics was like, oh fuck, I forgot my bag on the dock. So then they had to turn around and like, like squeegee back into the harbor <laughs> to go get this guy's bag. Oh my God. And then um, while we were in the boat, I was like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm like having this baby. Well, first I was like, I'm pooping. And they were like, you're not. And I was like, I'm, I am, I am pooping. And he was like, you're, you're really not. And I was like, I swear to God, <laughs> if there's not poop coming out of my body right now, I would be shocked. I wasn't allegedly. How can one truly know? So then we get to the other side, to the mainland, um, and they transfer me into the ambulance there um, on the dock. And I'm like, oh, it's go time. And I was telling, um, I was telling the paramedics on that side, I was like, I'm ha like, it's, I need to push. He was like, it's not, you're not like crowning. And I was like, I, I need to push <laughs> real fucking bad. And he was like, you're not crowning, you're not crowning. And then he was like, oh, you're crowning. So we put it in park on the dock and I gave birth to my baby right then and there. It was exactly an hour later, 5.20. <laughs> this is like now about 26 hours since my water broke, but it was like an hour from the start of contractions to having the baby. It was so fucking wild, you guys. Literally, I the whole time I was like, I cannot believe I have to do this right now. Like I, I actually can't believe there is no option. It's all on me, baby. Because with my first, I was like, I, I'd like to try having the baby without an epidural. And then I got in the hot seat and I was like, oh no, 
no, no, no, no, no. That's fucking insane. Obviously, I'm not gonna be doing that today, doctor. Thank you. Um, and I got an epidural and it was great. I've had a few people be like, well, at least it was fast, too fast. I just like to have a moment. Okay, is that a crime? Sue me. Then I push the baby out. I'm like, thank God. I literally just couldn't stop saying that. I was like, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. Like I, I just was like, broken record on repeat like I because like towards the end of like the delivery like well the labor and delivery I guess I need this like I cannot handle this any longer so when it was done it was like just hallelujah okay then we start our trek to the hospital apparently again I'm still trying to just like collect myself at this point the one paramedic says that there's blood squirting from my body these are not chill medical terms for me. I'm not cool with this right now. And for some reason, this is insane to me. I don't know if it was just this, it just so happened to be the case or if this is like all ambulances, it couldn't possibly be all ambulances because that would be insanity. But for some reason, they didn't have anything on board to stop the bleeding. So there's a lot of times where after you give birth, they'll give you a shot um, so that it helps to stop the bleeding. Um, but they didn't have anything like that on the ambulance. They didn't have anything at all. You can do, um, it's called some type of massage. I can't, it, like it makes it sound like a pleasant thing, but it's extremely unpleasant. But basically they're like massaging your uterus through your stomach. And it is so unbelievably painful because even after you give birth, you're still having contractions because you need to like birth the placenta. And then sometimes still after that, you're still having contractions because it's from what I understand, like how your body like helps to stop bleeding, but it's painful. Like you're still having these painful contractions and then they're massaging the shit out of my stomach. It was so insanely painful. Um, and they just like, couldn't stop the bleeding, couldn't stop the bleeding. And like, just the way they were talking about it, I was like starting to panic. First of all, if I, had this baby and now I die, I'm gonna be pissed. Someone's getting fucking haunted. I don't know who I'm gonna be pointing the finger at, but someone, someone's fucking getting it. And then also the guy says to me, he's like, sometimes um, nipple stimulation can help stop the bleeding. And so I was like, Whoosh let's fucking do it. I'm stimulating the shit out of my nipples. And like, I'm just, again, I'm fucking delirious. Like I'm just like trying not to die right now. And so I'm like stimulating my nipples, stimulating my nipples. And then at one point he was like, okay, that's like, that's enough. <laughs> First of all, I will stimulate my nipples, sir, to my heart's content, as long as I damn well please, if it's gonna keep me from fucking dying. All I know is that like, all I think is that I'm like on the verge of death here and like I'm just trying to fucking save my own life because clearly, we don't have the shit on board to make it happen. So if it's gonna come to fruition through my nipples, <laughs> then that's what we're fucking doing. We finally get to the hospital. The one midwife is there and she's like, hey, <laughs> I'm just messaging people. Like, I can't believe this fucking just happened, bitch. <laughs> Let me fucking tell you a story. And then I was like shaking so badly I, from the blood loss, I think, or like shock, I don't know what the hell. Um, but I was like, sh like shaking, shaking, shaking so badly, like I was freezing cold kind of thing. Um, and they were giving me like blankets out of this like blanket warmer, which was just divine. And um, I was just like, can I have another blanket? Can I have another blanket? They just like kept bringing me more and more blankets. And I was like under like friggin' six blankets, just like feeling so fucked. Like it, it was such a bizarre, oh my God, it was just the worst. But the nurses at this hospital were immaculate. The f first time I gave birth, I had to get a lot of stitches and going to the bathroom was like a, a moment kind of thing. And I was like really like, I was like covered in blood. Like it was just like not a good situation. Like I just like felt so grimy and they walked me to the bathroom the first time I had a baby but I like went in by myself, which you think is like what you would want. And maybe that is what some people want. But for me, I was like, I think I need an adult in here. And so I was like, just trying to like clean myself up with baby wipes and stuff like that. This woman, heaven on earth, like this woman was just such a lady, love her. She like brought me into the bathroom. She like helped me sit down. She like changed out my pad for me. Like it was just like, it sounds like so 
horrific. <laughs> but honestly, it was just so lovely. And then she gave me, oh my God, like after I had my first baby, I just like craved apple juice like crazy. Like I loved apple juice with like, just like crispy, like crunchy ice in it. Oh my God, it was like the best thing ever. Um, and this woman brings me apple juice with like the good crunchy hospital ice. <sighs> what, a, what a woman, truly. Like I just, oh my, it was worth it for that moment, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> Fucking Jacqueline, shutting down her brand. This is how much I have left of this lipstick. Pissed. Anyways, that was me getting to the hospital. I think I'm going to save the aftermath for another video. Um, because time's a ticking <laughs> with two babies around here. You know what I mean? Um, but I can't believe I was like able to just like film this without my baby waking up. This is like, what a, what a moment we're having. Thanks so much for listening to me bellyache about my labor that I probably could have predicted would be more difficult on myself than it perhaps needed to be, but, um, shit happens. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.